My name's David Mungo Knox. Wallace Namugwis is my Indian name. I come from the village of Fort Rupert. I'm a descendant of Mungo Martin, and we're here at the Royal British Columbia Museum restoring one of his poles that represent four crests that come from, from our tribes within our Kwakwakiwak territory. The original carver was Mungo Martin with David Martin and Henry Hunt and Mildred Child. My name is Mervyn Child. I'm uh, the son of Mildred and Edward Child. And uh, I'm presently working on a totem pole that was in front of the Wawaditla in downtown Victoria. And my mother worked on it. Her maiden name is Mildred Child. And so she worked with her grandfather, Mungo Martin, and her uncle, David Martin. This project was carved 67 years ago at Thunderbird Park before the museum was built. And so over the course of time, many of the uh, design elements and as it was repainted, lots of the original design was lost. And so it's been an interesting conversation to, with David and others to, to try to recover what the old people did. The different phases is to start with removing the rot, to cut it out, to do the patchwork, to clean it up, and to prep it to get it ready to paint. The way it's written is that Mungo wanted to describe or include a pole that, was, that would define or represent all of the Kwakwakiwak community and, and nations of people. So on the top of the pole is, is a thunderbird and it's uh, Tsuna, it's specific to uh, an origin story of the Denakdalk. Below that is a grizzly bear holding a copper, and uh, it's described as the, what I read as the Walibu clan of the Kwagyus. Below that grizzly bear is a man, is a, is a form of a man, and that, that's the human form of that same grizzly bear ancestor. So those two characters represent one origin of the Kwakwakiwak, followed by a beaver. It's identified as the ancestor, a principal ancestor of the Nakwakdok, of uh, people of the coast in and around Blunden, what is now called Blunden Harbor. And below that is a Tsunakwa, identified again, written and recorded as uh, an ancestor of the Namkis people. I've studied Mungo's design, so I'm doing restoring it to the best I can, doing what I was taught by Uncle Tony Hunt Sr. He was taught by his father, Henry Hunt Sr., and Henry was taught by Mungo Martin. So we're taught the form lines, we're taught how to do the structural form lines and how things are blocked in and how things are laid out. How I learned to repair a pole is just uh, just being hands-on experience, working alongside with my uncles, Richard Hunt, Tony Hunt Sr. You never put your own signature on the pole. You always get it to the way it was. So that's one of the first things I learned. That's why you study it, and then, then, then you got to get it back to its original state. You know, restoration is important because, of course, the, the elements, the wind and the rain, are, are so uh, detrimental to the health and well-being of, the, of a totem pole. So if you want to get some long, longevity out of your, your investment, and so the, this pole is 67 years old, and it's been well looked after, it's been well treated. I'm George Field. I'm a conservator, so that rather than restoration, we look at conservation. So maintaining the history of things rather than necessarily restoring things to their final. When you restore something, you want to make sure that you maintain some of its history. You know, as they say, the hand of the artist who made it, you don't want to lose that. You want, to, you want people to be able to come and see both the, the hand of the original artist and the hand of the person who, who's helped to restore it and bring it to a point where it can be on display further. The Royal British Columbia Museum 
It's a great collaboration showing that we're working together and they also gave back some old poles that's from the park. They were so they were so rotten and they were unrestorable. So I'm making a park up in Fort Rupert and it's going to be called the Mungo Martin Memorial Park where we're going to have all poles from all over the world coming home and we're just going to let it rot back to the earth. My best advice is to get back to the families that got the hereditary rights to the pole. We always look after our own stuff, you know, and if they would scrub it up a little more and spread paint on it, it would last longer. So it could be preserved. You know, back in the day, we, we never did all this kind of work because we just let it rot and get back to the earth. But now we're learning if we maintain it, it's preserved longer and it's maintained and the world will be able to look at it for longer and to uh, study and to learn from it.